for years, this abandoned house was a place of love, laughter and cherished memories. Built by an American Jewish family many decades ago, it stood as a symbol for their success and prosperity. But in 2018, tragedy struck when a devastating fire tore through the home. They were woken at night and saw their life's work light up in flames in front of their eyes. As the smoke cleared and the family surveyed the damage, they realized that they could never return to the house. The damage was too extensive and the structure was no longer safe to inhabit. And so the house sat empty, a haunting reminder of what once was. Until this day, all the memories of the former owner remain inside, a place that is unique beyond words. It will give us a glimpse into the lives of these people before disaster struck. Today, the family remains safe and sound. They seem to have moved on from their past lives and show no interest in what's left behind beneath the rubble. From the charred remains of the fire to the treasure left behind by the family, get ready to be transported to a world of drama, intrigue and heartbreak as we delve into the history of this fascinating abandoned house in upstate New York. So welcome everybody to a new episode on the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie and today I have a very special place to show you. For the first time ever on the channel, I'm documenting a mansion of a Jewish family, an Hasidic Jewish family. I'm here standing in the middle of the forest, making my way to this abandoned mansion. And I'm actually joined by a fairly big group today. So of course, we got Moreno in the house, like always. We also got exploring with Josh today. How are you, guys? How are you doing, out. man? First time on our channels together. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's gonna be cool. Hey, man. What's up, dude? What's your name on YouTube, man? I'm Seth Borden. Seth Borden. Nice to meet you, you man. Nice yes. And his girlfriend with us as well. I forgot your name. Excuse me. <laughs> That's Casey. <laughs> That's Casey. Okay. Let's go to the house now. Let's check it out. We've already been there yesterday to take some pictures, but today we're gonna film the place, document it and it's full of historic site and everything that's been left behind there. Ah, it's gonna be still a trek through the forest here to get to this place. As you can see, it's still very cold in this part of the United States. I'm still in upstate New York today, but wow, it's like a fairy tale that we're walking through. Over there in the distance, we get the first glimpse of the mansion. It's one of the most extravagant places so far that we are documenting here in the United States. And for me, it's always very special if I find something new, something that I've not documented before in the past, like a Jewish family. That's insane. I'm very fascinated by the Jewish religion, by their way of life. And to see a mansion of theirs is a dream to me. And in this setting, in this foresty setting over here, it's going to be even better to document this place. Snowy winter wonderland, winter landscape. As you can see, there are still a lot of things on the outside. It has been abandoned since 2018, when a fire, a devastating fire, broke out inside of the place. And I'm going to show you this in a moment. But as you can see, they tried to board it up. People came here, smashed the windows, opened the place, and now it's open for us, of course. That's, of course, a bit devastating, but now we can get a chance to document this wonderful place. While making our way towards the abandoned house, we were secretly followed by four young members of the nearby Jewish community. They were interested in what we were going to do there. 
After explaining them our purpose, they gave us a tour through the house and told us a bit more about the family and their fate. So these gentlemen here, these, Jew, uh, these are Jewish uh, people from the community and they actually know the owners of the place that we're going to document today. And they told us just that in 2018, like I said before, a uh, fire happened in this place. And you also knew the person that lived in this place, yeah. right? Yeah. And who was it to you? It was a friend. Was a friend. <laughs> yeah, a friend. Yeah. Friend of yours. Yeah. And what happened to the people that lived here? They were they, lived there. they, were, they just... sold the house and there was a construction fire. Okay. Oh. So they moved somewhere else now. And now no one lives there. But they're safe, here. right? Yeah, everyone's yeah. fine. No one got hurt. Okay, that's great. Maybe it's better for your Someone got hurt. I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. No, we don't do We're that. not about that. We're not about it's that. All, it's all about the content. <laughs> yeah. <bro. laughs> cool. Well, thank you, guys. They're going to show us some things in the house, probably tell us something about the history. Yeah. So uh, I'm first going to move my car because I parked at their, at their Jewish school over there. And they said that our car is getting get towed. So that's, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that first. So. Uh, gentlemen, I'll see you in a moment. <laughs> Why don't they restore the place? I have no clue. Probably you have no insurance. clue. Insurance money. Insurance money? They don't yeah, have insurance. There's no oh. insurance on the house yet. Why not? Because they, they were in the middle of selling the house and then it burnt down. So, so the insurance oh. wasn't on the house yet. Jeez. So it's actually not that, ha that old of a house, right? No, it was pretty old when they sold it, yeah. Okay. I don't know how exactly, but... I believe it's from 1981 or something, probably. Okay. Like, that can make sense. Um, 1981? Yeah. It looks old. Okay. Yeah. It looks older than... So is this a, a typical Jewish house, would you would say, uh, or...? No, this is a... This, this is, is a little... Big, this, this is, is like bigger this than is it, very yeah. big. Okay. Yeah. But like a typical rich person Jewish house? Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> it's a little uh, older now. Okay. This year. Okay, interesting. I mean, I probably just so, so, so if you see like anything right? like a feature in this home that's like typical from your culture. Oh, oh yeah, uh, like hats over here. Oh yes. yeah. So a lot of hats throughout this oh, house. Yeah. For like yeah. praying. When you, you we were, yeah, ah, that's praying. for praying. Yeah. Ah. The hats are for praying. Yeah, we wear yeah. them when we pray. Because like, it used to be a classy thing. thing to wear hats. If you go back to like the 1900s, and it used to be everyone was wearing a hat. Okay. And now it's just so. Yeah, I, I live very here. close to Antwerp, and I see the Jewish community always walking around yeah. with hats. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's just like it's just our religion. You're talking about. Yeah. Second head covering, like we have these. Yeah, Th those second. are called capels or. These are yamakas. Yamakas. Yeah. Okay. And, and your your uh, holy like like kind of Bible is the Torah, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. And now we were discussing this. This is written here in Hebrew because we saw the side of the yeah. building and that's Where? those strange letters like the school. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, that's yeah, Hebrew, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Do you know how to talk that language too? I oh, not exactly. Nah. Some, it. some, some schools are very difficult, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Some schools they have like subjects on it, but yeah. like we could, not, we could not, like we could read it. Like, um, yeah. So if we find the Torah inside of the house, you can read it. Yeah. Technically, yeah. Yeah, technically. Translating it would be hard. Translating would be. So I'm back outside right now, but I'm now standing in front of the place and I just had the first look at it and it looks magnificent. It even looks like a European place. Let me show you what this place looks like. So they had this beautiful front side of the mansion over here. Wow, this looks like an Austrian German style of architecture here. They even have this fountain here in front of the mansion and then this enormous driveway and front yard. These people were rich and we ta just talked to the Jewish people and they told us exactly that they had multiple businesses, they were in a managing position of multiple businesses, they were very influential people in the New York community but also in the community of the Jewish people. A wonderful fountain here in front of the house. Let me show you the architecture of this place as well. I'm enjoying this place. Look at the stone architecture that they have on there, the stone exposed stone. I don't think they, these are full stone, this is probably just a mimic, but it looks amazing. It feels like I'm in Austria, Germany, like I said before, and we are exploring one of those places in that country. It's all boarded up after it got, uh, got destroyed by a fire in 2018. You can even see they had lions here guarding the front door of this household. And it looks like they also used to spout some water out of there back in the day. This is the front entrance to the house. And up there you can see there's even a balcony left behind where they could stand up there, 
in an early morning, drink a coffee and overlook their property. And here you would enter into their wonderful mansion. Wow. This front door is amazing. Let's open this beauty up and let's go on a tour throughout it. Wow. That's just amazing walking into this hallway. Have a look at the extravagance that we're seeing here in front of us. These people were insanely rich that once lived here. I don't know much about them yet, but I hope to find that out during our exploration of this place. Even the sides of the hallway in here are completely designed. Every single detail they thought about. Let's close this door up. And then we have a serene space where we're gonna do our walkthrough of this mansion. Wow, even the insides of the door here are uniquely carved. Every single detail they thought about. Wow, and even the door handles, this brass or gold plated gold they have on there or this brass color. And even one handle unfortunately has broken off. Here was the alarm system that has now been dismantled and everything, all the light switches are also still in here. I heard from somebody that at one point the electricity still used to work in this place. That seems very unsafe to me because there was a huge fire in here. And the first room I'm going to show you over here is this one. Carvings above it here. And then these same style of doors, but then a smaller format that, end, that open up. Wow, this is completely loose. And that reveal this bathroom with these mirrors inside of it. Have a look at this. Isn't that just insane? The whole floor is covered <laughs> with debris. So we can go in here, but we have to be very careful. Have a look at this. When you were sitting on your toilet in here, you could look at yourself from every single angle while you were doing your business. <laughs> I didn't want that at all, I think. Lovely marble sink. All the artifacts and ornaments still standing there. Wow. This is insane. Oh. All destroyed up. And then the wonderful hallway itself. The chandelier hanging up there. Okay. There's a one, another one of those doorways over here. Let's have a look at behind this one. Let's see what this one reveals. Oh, there's another room behind there as well. I haven't seen this one yet. Oh. This looks like a French deco room, as you can see. When we enter into there, I'm gonna turn up the light a little bit and show you this room. I'm not sure what this space in the house was used for back in the day. You can see a chair still standing there. Beautiful fireplace. Wonderful design features on it. I love this blue glass that we have behind here. And even all the firewood is still standing there from the time that they used this, used to light this place up. Bottles that used to hold liquor back in the time. And then we have this sort of trumpet bottle with Hebrew writing on there. Like my always, the fashion that I do, I always smell things and I always <laughs> want to see what these liquors are like. I'm not going to taste it, don't worry. Oh, this is actually a very nice liquor. Wow. That smells really good still after the four years of abandonment and the fire that happened in here, of course. That's interesting. A wonderful lamp also standing in here. But again, some unique design features on the bottom of it. This vase standing over here, this looks like an urn. But it's definitely not. It's some sort of a vase, probably something Jewish that I don't know anything about. And then it's slowly. Wow. And also have a look at these tapestries or this wallpaper. It's not even wallpaper. This is what I was talking about. This is this French style. Like we have these bouncy wallpapers in this house. And that's something you see coming back in French manors and castles a lot. And in the middle of the room, you have this wonderful upholstery chair standing, waiting to be used again. 
What do we have here at the end of the room? Another lantern. Another drawer down there. Oh, and here we have one of those Jewish bald hats. See if there's any make in there. Roin Faux, it says on the inside. Imported exclusively by Bancraft. Wow. Let's go back out here. Let's have one last glimpse at this hallway. Oh, I can't get over it. How beautiful this is. Even though this is a mansion that has been built in the 1980s, it still feels like I'm walking in a place that has hundreds of years of history and it has a lot to show for them. And then they also had this corner of the room here. It's completely burned up. We have this mannequin here, this Jewish hat on there. It's completely burned up on the side. This is one of those encavements in the wall where you would also put a bust or a statue back in the time. I don't think this is original, the mannequin. They probably had like a heavy duty, beautiful carving statue, like a marble statue on there, but this is definitely not original. And then they have this corner here in the room. I think it might have been a reading corner or something like that. There also used to be a light fixture upstairs, up there in this crown molding. And then they have this wonderful chair standing here. And I think it was some sort of a reading space, especially when you were sitting here, imagine back in the day when you lived in this house, at this overlook while you were reading, that must have been wonderful. Here we see one of the first art pieces, completely destroyed after the fire by people that came into this place to vandalize it. Something very terrible. A lovely clock in here as well. This is a regulator. Ooh, that's a very harsh noise. Look at what I just found. Oh my gosh. We have this Jewish boy over here, probably one of the residences of the place. And look at this. They all signed this and all wrote on there, probably children from his class. Maybe something happened to him, I don't know. They even drew him a mustache and a beard, as you can see. That's pretty interesting. Okay, let's put this back nicely. I'm gonna give it the space over here. Behind the couch. And there we go. Oh, look at this hat. This is pretty creepy. <laughs> Lying over here. And they have this sort of storage area here underneath the stairway. Some art pieces are stored in here and some other things like that. And then we're gonna go into one of the most spectacular rooms of this entire place. The living space where the family came together, held dinner parties, had a lot of laughter. You can still feel the memories that have been created in this room. I love how it has been set up. It just looks like a typical European manor in the south of France. And that's what really intrigues me about this place brings back a lot of memories. I was like, with this intention going to the United States that all the places that I'm gonna film are pretty much trashed, but discovering a place like this, completely left behind, just blew my mind. The artworks and everything that's still in here is just insane. With this wonderful cabinet over here with intrigue design, this is something typically European. They probably, they probably imported it at some point. You have this weapons crest in here, this encavement in here. And this beautiful cabinet has, has just a very expensive piece of antique. Oh, look at this gold foil that I even put in here. They probably placed this on the table when they had dinner parties. Fancy dinner parties. Wow. Everything is still in here. Pretty much stuck. And then all the liquor bottles still on top of there. They definitely did love the liquor in this place. We already saw the other bottles in the other room. But I think I gotta smell this one as well because this is a liquor that I've never seen before in my life. A 32% Marashka, Marashka original liquor. And I'm looking at which country it's from, but I don't see anything on there. It's probably from Prague, Prague, Prague Czech Republic. But let me just open this beauty up. Uh, I can't get it open. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it over here. It's fine, it's fine. A lovely plant standing over here as well. And this is a Jewish liquor. As you can see, there's Hebrew writing on it. That's sort of a white wine, I think. This is also not open anymore, not open yet, so I'm not gonna open that up. Wow. 
a corner table over here to display some items on and a lovely chandelier hanging here on the wall a crystalier chandelier like i always say and then this this view that we have here in front of us is something very unique like these cabinets these gold plated cabinets are something i have not seen before in my career of exploring they also have been damaged by the fire that happened in this place you can see they have some black smoke on them and they have been damaged throughout that time nothing really interesting in there but what intrigues me the most are these mannequins in here like the Jewish people that love their hats, they are big on hats. Whenever I used to walk through the streets of Antwerp, very close to my home, they have a very big Hasidic uh, Jewish community and you would, would see them all walking around with hat, hats like these and they are very common in their traditions. Oh, wow, a painting hanging here on the wall. A township somewhere. And then this stroller here in the middle of the room. Isn't that just a very beautiful antique piece with these two, two dolls in there? Oh my gosh. Maybe these were from the children, from the ladies that used to live in here. They could play with them. Can you imagine walking down the street with this stroller and your child in there? You're definitely the centerpiece of attention when you did that. Even more dolls in this one, the same style of cabinet, completely identical to the other one. The only thing that's different with this one is it has drawers inside of it. Wow. I love this face that is over here as well. <laughs> Look over here on the table. One of their guns is still left behind. This is actually the first gun that I found in the United States. Wow. And this is definitely a real gun, as you can see. There's no inscription on there or anything. Wait, we have some inscription over here. B-S-I-O, B-S-10, Sul. A wonderful rifle. It's always very special to find a rifle in an abandoned place, because they are not cheap. And then this table down below here. Beautiful design. This face carved into here. It's very unique. See if there's anything in the drawer over here. No. There used to be items in here. You can see the outprint still in there. And then we have this fireplace to light up this room back in the time. Even some blocks of wood still in there with the marble around it. Must have been wonderful when it was burning. Everybody's sitting in the couch over here and just enjoying each other. Drinking some liquors, talking about our days. <sighs> I can only imagine, but must have been wonderful. Food basket up here, completely made out of concrete. And an enormous mirror behind there. We even have some crown molding on the walls over here. I have not noticed that yet, but literally everywhere there is design throughout this place, throughout this house. Still standing on this coffee table here and these two couches around it. Now we also have this sort of face lamp post over here to the side and for some sort of weird reason there's a rope hanging from the ceiling in the middle of this room <laughs> one more of the same chandeliers hanging here on the wall and then we have this this trolley over here it doesn't seem like a real one this is just a design piece that i have in the house oh look at this it's just terrible you can see footprints here on the wall where they try to kick in and make holes in the wall. Jeez, some people just don't have any respect. Wonderful cabinet over here as well. And then some paintings on the top of there. Wow, a temple in the back. Wonderful landscape as well. Some flowers and everything up there. Oh. Look at this bond. It's a ferret. Wow, oh, taxidermy ferret. <laughs> that's probably something that the woman of the household would wear. Something that's just disgusting nowadays and that we... Oh, there's even two suit to each other. 
something that we never do now, nowadays anymore. It's just not acceptable anymore. And they're hanging on this upholstery chair over there. There's one more thing I need to point out of this room. And those are these statues over here. Beautifully carved statues, as you can see. And then we can go further into this side of the mansion. And this is actually where it gets pretty interesting because this is where the fire happened in 2018. And you can clearly see the aftermath. This place is just not livable anymore. The whole ceiling collapsed on here. Upstairs is the bedroom there. And you can even see a mattress barely hanging on. But here we have just come into what used to be the kitchen of this Jewish family. Where the mothers, like it always has been, and the Jewish community used to cook the meals for the whole family. What I think is also very interesting is the building style of this kitchen. When you enter into this place, you immediately have this huge rack over here, this library with hundreds of books, all cookbooks still left behind. And down here, there are even still some pictures of the family left. Wow, look at them. Their baby photos that didn't even take out after the place got abandoned in 2018. Everything is still in here. You can see some Hebrew writing on this book over here. The 36th anniversary dinner. Greetings, Steno book. There's even some handwriting on the top of it. And here we have this booklet about furnishings. And let's now have a closer look at this kitchen because this is where the mothers of the family, just like it used to be in the Jewish community and in their culture, used to cook the meals for the family and the men that lived here. Wow, everything is broken and fallen over, completely dilapidated, unfixable anymore. The beams over here in the ceiling have burned through to the ash. I love the style of this kitchen. This truly reminds me of an Austrian-German kitchen that I used to film in another video. I will link it up there. An enormous fridge. Even the bottles of everything is still left in there after the devastating fire. All that cooking equipment, everything still in this state of the levitation. Wow. Here we can see pieces of the bedroom lying here on the ground. Let's see, this is probably from a cabinet upstairs that fell down. There's also a piece of the ceiling here. Everything is left. I love these lamps that are hanging here. And all the plates, cups and china still in the cabinets over here. That's so interesting. I was just talking to those Jewish guys and I was asking like, like, why don't they take out the pictures out of this place, but they just didn't know it. They didn't have any words for it because they told me that the Jewish community has a lot of value in their, in their heritage, in their memories, and that normally take good care of it. But why this family didn't do it is unclear. They are safe, they are in a new place. And yeah, it's just unclear why they didn't come back to retrieve those very important memories that they made in this place. Look at this lovely stove that we have standing over here. Isn't that just interesting, everybody? I think they would also cook something on here or maybe it was just only for warmth. There's some blocks of firewood underneath there, all still left behind from the day the place got demolished. A wonderful stove standing here as well. A cast iron stove. A Garlano. Garlano. That's a brand I've not seen before yet in my videos. Let's try to get over here. We have this huge island here with these cooktops and everything. Let's try to get over because I saw something very interesting here at the end. All the bottles of wine and champagne are still left in these holsters up here. Let's have a look what kind of wine these people love to drink. Tokay wine, this is just a table wine. As you can see, a sweeted natural grape table wine. I think I even see a bottle of champagne lying in here. Sparkling apple cider. <laughs> this is not even alcohol. It's probably just for the children. 
Wow. And even a microwave at the end here, built into the stone wall. And now we have the dining room to this side. I will come there in a second. But I think this used to be their living room. And they overlooked the whole forest at the end there. Let me show you if I can bring it in a bit clearer. The whole forest you can see from this enormous window over here. And the design from the outside also comes back on the inside. The stone wall and everything with the burned ceiling up there. The fire spread throughout the whole house. It was actually a pretty wonderful living area with an enormous couch over here, a bench over there, and even this lower area with a fireplace behind this painting there. You can still see a glimpse of the fireplace in the back. Wow. Some sort of a book here. Dear Tamari, I'm gonna miss you so much next year. I hope you enjoy high school. I had so much fun with you in school. Please, kid, love you. Esther Alexander. This is some sort of a book where they wrote in all their wishes for the child that went to school. So Tamari was one of the children that lived in this place. And he went to high school at some point, probably in another state or far from here. It even has this lettering up here that says Tam Tamari. You can still see the engraving. The journal, your journal. And this is from the summer of 2014. And this is also from that child, Tamari, the 30th of June, 2014. Everything is still in there. What are these notes that we have here on the floor? There's nothing on them anymore, unfortunately. And then one of my favorite rooms in this entire place, the dining space, a very important room in a Jewish house. And they had a skylight above here. It's unfortunately now covered with debris from, na from natural decay, but it must have been wonderful in here when the people were still sitting here around the table. Can you imagine a Jewish family still sitting here? The man on the corner of the table with the hat on and they're having a dinner together after a long day of work and school. Wow. The plants are also still in here. I suppose these are fake. Yes, these are fake, fake plants. And here we can see a picture of the children. That's most likely to marry with his younger sister that we see next to it. Wonderful plants in here as well. Really lights up the room, brings character to it. And then this wonderful dining table centered in the middle of this room. Wow. Tablecloth still on there and everything. And the chair standing here at the end of the table. Oh, I love these lanterns that I have over here as well. Okay, I think this doorway over here leads us to the outside, to that balcony that we just saw. Wow, have a look at this. A complete overview of that property. They had an enormous property. As you can see, the children probably would love to play in this backyard between the trees. Here is where they would have outside dinners in the summer. And you can even see a glimpse of the house from over here. These enormous glass panels over there. Icicles are forming there. Just gonna go a bit closer to that side. Here you can see the icicles are forming. Wow, that's a beautiful view everybody. I love it. And then from the kitchen, we can go further into the house. And the first thing I notice over here is this food cabinet with this writing here on, like the phone numbers are still on there. And it says Toddy, Mommy, Bobby, uh, Rachel and Home. So these are all the numbers. I believe that Toddy is like a, a name for a father. 
And here we have even have the phone number of Damari. Of course, I'm all gonna blur this out, but um, just promise me that there are phone. <laughs> you can just trust me that there are phone numbers on there, but I'm not gonna show those, of course. Lots of paperwork in here as well. And then phone numbers with the streets and everything. And here we got this wonderful display of pictures left behind of the people that once used to live in this place. And then don't look very Jewish in these pictures. Maybe on a vacation they weren't as strict as they were when they went to the synagogue or when they were practicing their religion. All the cans of food are still left behind here in this cabinet. The bottles, the olives, everything is still in here. Oh, I almost fell over there, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the pots and pans in here and even an extra fridge. I'm not sure how many people used to live in this space, but it is an enormous house. So you can bet a lot of people used to live in here. Here we have a cabinet. It's still filled with clothing. I just don't understand why wouldn't they even take their clothing out of the house. It's not there's nothing wrong with it after the fire. These are their formal clothing that they used to wear when they had like formal occasions and went to the synagogue and went to practice religion and stuff like that. Very interesting. All their gloves are also still left there. <coughs> Excuse me everybody. And here we come into, I believe, some sort of a playroom. Oh yeah, and even the ceiling over here has collapsed probably from the heat that was generated in this place. You can see some game boards still left behind, words with friends, playing cards, Uno or C laying on the ground. So in here, this was their playroom. Even a ping pong table is still left here. And then this, yeah, we call this football billiards in Belgium with these knobs on there and the ball bounces off it. It's actually a very strange billiard table. I'm just gonna call it a billiard table to find because I've never seen it in this chair before. Normally it's just a normal billiard table with these, uh, yeah, these, these rubber plugs in there in the middle to bounce the balls off. Even the kitchen in this room, then you can really tell that people are rich if they have multiple kitchens throughout their house. And then a sitting area to this side as well. Where they would used to relax in the evening, enjoy themselves, enjoy their company. A grand, wow, have a look at this. This is actually the plan of the house. You can see the staircase that we saw earlier, the dining hall that we saw over here, the living room, the guest rooms. I think we are right now in this room. No. Uh, we are in this room, I believe. Yeah. That's so interesting. And there are multiple ones of these. Oh, this is a view from the front of the house. But that's actually not the house that we are visiting today. So this might be a different house than the one that we are in right now. It does look like it, but yeah. If I look closer at the hallway, it doesn't resemble this house. So maybe in their managing company, they would also design houses and stuff like that. We have a book laying over here. Oh my God, have a look at this. This is a story about how my great grandfather survived the Holocaust. My great grandfather, Yitzka Sternhell was 14 years old in the war. His parents were taken away and I left them behind by non-Jewish neighbors. This is a complete story about the events that happened the terrible events that happened in the Second World War to the Jewish community. They really didn't deserve this, nobody deserves it, and this is a picture of the man in question that survived the Holocaust. Wow. All these people are still in here. That really leaves me speechless for a second. I'm, I'm very interested in and the events that took place in the Second World War and the reasoning behind the 
yeah, the terrible events that happened. I also visited a lot of Holocaust camps and Poland and Germany and just seeing a house over here in the United States where actually there's history about the people that lived here that even experienced these terrible events. It's, it's touching. It's really touching. <sighs> okay. Let's go further. Wow. This house leaves me speechless. I'm just going to say it again. I think we have ended up in some sort of a laundry room over here. You can see the iron still standing there, the knitting equipment, and everything is still in here. A few pieces of clothing with some tack still on there. Oh, oh, I love this ironing board that folds up into the wall and then neatly folds away and folds out again when you need it again. All the blankets, clothing and everything is still in there. Okay, before we go upstairs, I'm first, you can see the stairway over here. There's one stairway upstairs, but there's also one downstairs. I just briefly showed you the downstairs earlier on, but let's go down there right now and let's look at it more in depth because I think it's also a pretty interesting space. In the basement of a place, people also store a lot of artifacts and history about their lives because, yeah, they didn't need it anymore. Wow, there's some paintings down here that have completely been trampled. As you can see, I'm gonna save this one because I think it's just devastating. Keep it lying on the ground. People are just gonna walk over it and even destroy it even more than it's destroyed right now. Might the fire have started from this basement? Over here, it looks way worse than upstairs. Look at all that black smoke that went throughout this place. Here we have a painting hanging on a wall that's completely covered with black smoke. And here we come into some sort of a bigger basement. Maybe this is also where the cars were stored back in the time. I have picture frames and standing here, gold plated picture frames. Oh, look at this game. Uh, <laughs> I forgot an uh, arcade, arcade game. <laughs> I forgot the name for, for it for a second. Wow. I love these machines. The gun on there and everything and I would feed a quarter in there and then you could play a game oh these paintings that are standing here are still pretty pristine with these landscapes back here they are still very pristine oh look at this furniture that's standing here back here we got these wonderful Paul Street sofas standing here in this room they probably saved them somehow from the fire and put them down here. Oh, this one is so nice. It's something you would come across in the French castle that I've filmed before. They're standing here rotting away in the basement of this Jewish house. That was a very interesting basement. I really love this place so far. I'm, I'm curious what we can find upstairs. So let's head over there right now. I'm definitely gonna walk up that winding staircase and get that feeling of when people used to live in here and what it must have been like to live in such an extravagant place. Now I'm gonna take a stroll up the staircase to the upper floors and see what's up there. I just love the design and architecture of this place and the staircase itself. I have already expressed myself multiple times, but I just can't exaggerate it enough. Oh, the window behind here, letting light into the building with the chandeliers next to it. Such a warm and beautiful feeling. Then the staircase itself is just magnificent with this chandelier hanging here in the middle and the walkway around it. Oh, let's go into this first room here to the left. And I believe that this used to be the master bedroom of the place where the parents of the household used to sleep. And it's actually pretty funny because in the Jewish community, they have some strict rules. You can see that the beds are able to separate from each other. Before marriages, uh, before marriage, the people, the man and the woman, 
can't sleep together. They can only have a girlfriend from when they are 19 years or older. So those are all strict rules by the Hasidic Jewish community. Wow. Look at this. I love these beds. Wonderful carvings on them. Beautiful inlay, with the flowers and everything. And then these pillows here in front of them. Oh, so amazing to see. Oh, gotta put this back nicely again, of course. <laughs> I have to put everything like I found it. The bed has been torn up over here. And then they have these cushions in front of them. And they even have the same, same style of cabinet in this room as well. With that flower design on the front of it. Beautiful carvings throughout it. And I don't know what happened over here, but the whole wall has been destroyed somehow. That's not part of the fire. That's probably somebody that came into this place and searched for copper that they probably wanted to steal at some point. The shoes are also still here in the cabinet. And here we have some clothing of the man left behind. Have a look at this vanity that we have over here. We have these two doll hats standing up here or these mannequin hats still with the traditional hats that the Jewish woman used to wear on them. And you can, we already saw it throughout the house. They were very big on their hats. I can't get it back normally again. But they're very big on their hats. That's part of their tradition. That's part of their community. And I just love that they have such an eye for design, these people. And this one is also in the same style as the other pieces of furniture that we have in this room. Oh, this opens up to reveal these drawers and these cupboard spaces that they could use for their socks, their ties, their everything, maybe even their hats as well. Very richly designed, lots of luxury in this room. Let's go further here. Another cabinet standing to this side. And I have not been on this side of the house yet. Oh my God, <laughs> they have a very luxurious bathroom here. You can see the bathtub there at the end. Wow, completely made out of probably Italian marble. Oh, this is really nice. Here they would water, like fill it up. I think it, the bath is pretty uncomfortable to sit in, but the style of it is just amazing. This is the device to open and close. Wow. And even a marble shower to this side. All their products are also still left in there. Their Dove shampoo, their shower head, completely corroded up. Wow. And even their toilets still standing in this part of the house. Oh my God, there's even a sauna in this place where the man and woman could sit together in the evening and enjoy a nice hot sauna before they went to bed. Wow, have you ever seen that before? This is totally insane. And all their products also still left here. Their toothbrushes, their toothpaste, Everything black from smoke when that devastating fire happened in this place. And then they had this nice overlook over the overlaying backyard of this place. And then we're going back out into the hallway. Have a look at this beautiful piece. The chandelier hanging here in the middle. Crystalier chandelier. And the arch design up there is just wonderful. And back in the time when these windows didn't, weren't boarded up, it must have been flooded with light in here. And also looking at the walls that don't seem to be, they seem to be never painted. That's pretty strange. Even at these encavements in the wall where statues would be standing. And everywhere they had these shape of chandeliers hanging here to flood more light into the rooms. This doesn't open up anymore, but this goes to the balcony that we just saw in front of the house. 
Look at this shot. That's just totally insane. Wow. I love it. A drawer standing upstairs here as well. There's some paperwork on the floor. That's all from that company. Yes, this is from that company. I'm not gonna go too in depth into it because otherwise the location will be revealed. But we have a drawer standing here. And that brings us into the next part of this exploration. And over here we're gonna see the real devastation of this building. I think this was another bedroom at one point. A lot of things still lying on the floor. Oh, they got this sort of couch area to this side. The mirror behind there. Pretty fancy actually. And we got this picture of this lady lying here, this young girl. She looks lovely. Oh, so many memories still left in this place. That's insane. Socks and everything still lying on the floor. And here we have some Hebrew writing on this paperwork. I don't know if this was something from school or something else, but of course can't <laughs> read Hebrew as you could reckon. There's another picture. This man lying on the floor, he's giving a kiss. There's a lady at the top. Maybe this was his girlfriend or his secret girlfriend. Who knows? This was definitely a bedroom at one point. The clothes are still hanging here in the cabinet. Everything is still present from the time the people left here. Let's look at what kind of clothing there were. They actually are pretty fancy, as you can see. There's also a bathroom back here that's completely devastated by the fire. The whole walls have come off, completely broken and the ceiling is falling out. But every single bedroom in this place had its own bathroom. And that definitely tells you that these people are very wealthy because when we explore these castles and these palaces in Europe, you always see that every single room had its own bathroom. And this is also the case over here in this house. Her hair clips are also still left there. Beautiful. Let's go further. I think we can get an overview over here of this living room area. Downstairs, all the rubble you can see lying down there. The ceiling is falling out. This hall's always also a pretty surreal sight. As you can see, the paint is slowly shipping off the walls, completely burned away by the wood, uh, by the fire. And I've been talking a lot in my United States videos about the construction style of these houses, and that is very different from Europe. And here you can actually see it in person. It's all made with wood, it's all made with plywood and panels, instead of Europe where everything is built out of stone. European houses are way stronger. I don't think a fire happened in a, a place like this in Europe, it would survive, definitely. But this is unrepairable, unfortunately. And here we come onto an upstairs bedroom and we can look straight into the kitchen downstairs where Morena is filming right now. <laughs> That's totally insane. Here to this side, we have all the bed linen left behind on this upper floor. Jeez, I was saying that the basement looked pretty terrible with the fire. But this upstairs is completely devastated. Little sitting area over here. There is a, uh, there is a window behind there, but it's completely boarded up right now. I think after the fire, they completely boarded up this house. All the clothing is lying on the floor. And then over here, we actually have a pretty interesting piece. Because this is a jacket from a lady that lived in this place. The top half of, his, uh, of it is burned, and you can even see there's a hat still hanging in there. It's completely molded onto the fabric of this beautiful red dress. I love the style and design of it. I think we can enter into that bedroom over here. I have to, of course, be very, very careful because the floor is probably unstable. This is not a master bedroom. This is actually a pretty big bedroom. You can see the mattress is still standing in there. Everything is there still. There used to be the bathroom. The whole floor has sunken out. I can maybe make a small move towards 
over here. And then we can have a glimpse of the downstairs floors over there. <gasps> well, this is pretty dangerous what I'm doing right now. But I just want to give you the shots and views of this place. And just shows you what fire does to a place like this. Wow, that's dirty. All the clothing, all molten up. Still in the cabinet over here. The, uh, this used to be white clothing down there. White uh, jackets and white... Oh, I forgot the name for a second, but all of these things have become yellow. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny because I, I do speak like... I, I consider myself fluently in, in English, but sometimes I just forget names of items and... Uh, then I just have to improvise. <laughs> That's also, I always get comments about that and a lot of people tell me like, it's this, but I, I know it sometimes, but sometimes I just forget it. But that's just when you speak multiple languages, uh, you just have to excuse me for that. Here we have another completely black painting hanging on the wall. Oh. Flowers and everything's still on there. Now we have the chest where all the bed linen is stored in. Let's go into this room. And here we have yet another bedroom. So we already saw a place for six people to sleep in this household. So there must have been with six or more people living in here at one point. All their books are still in here that they used to read at night time. Curious to see if I can find more pictures and memories of the people. Oh, here we have another love picture. We saw this lady before in the other room, and now we see her again coming in this place. Oh, and yet we have another picture over here as well. Wow. Look at this colorful clothing. Probably for a special event they would wear these. And even still this cabinet over here, completely filled with all the clothes. So much clothing in this house. This is probably the house where I found the most clothing ever. Literally from all my explorations in nine years time. So much clothing everywhere. In their lovely living space, I'm gonna thank the people that once lived here. I hope they found a home where they can be happy now and uh, where they can live their lives out. And I hope that at one point in time, they will come back here to retrieve their valuables and items that they left behind because it's all invaluable. Memories you just can't replace. So please, the people that once lived here, come back and save those items. I want to thank you all for watching this video. To my honest opinion, I think this was one of the best places in the United States. Not only for the building, but also for the story behind it. The Jewish people that we met in the beginning, like all the storyline we found in the place itself and just the entire video as a whole. Thank you so much for watching it. Please like the video if you liked it. Subscribe down there if you're new to the channel and also write me a nice comment in the comment section. There's also a link in the description for Patreon. It's still a hobby for me, so if you would love to support this channel and help me out going around this beautiful world to film all these abandoned places, consider supporting this channel and helping me out. And I will see you all next week in another amazing episode. Bye bye. I love you very much.